Good morning, Kello. Not good morning. Good afternoon, Kello Land. It's midday. We're coming up on midday. We do have temperatures that have been warming as we do have our numbers in the 60s, 70s, and even an 80 in Rapid City. Temperatures will continue to warm today. You can expect numbers in the 80s for afternoon highs. This happens with a lot of sunshine, though a little breezy. All the more details on your forecast coming up as we begin midday in Kettle Land. Live from Kettle Land Media Group, midday in Kettle Land. An unusual start to the hockey season for the Stampede. How the team is working around a lack of ice coming up. Booster seats can save lives, but most parents are taking their children out of them too soon. I'm Danya Backus with the results of a new study. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. Rapid City Police are investigating an early morning shooting. The call came in around 4.30 to the area of North and Pine Street. When officers got there, they found a man who had been shot. The man was conscious of the scene and taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Police are asking anyone with any information about the shooting to call or submit an anonymous tip. This is the second shooting in Rapid City this week. Three people were shot Monday night. Yesterday, police reported that an 18-year-old died from a gunshot wound in that shooting. A third person is behind bars this midday, charged in connection to a kidnapping in Sioux Falls last month. Court documents say 43-year-old Samantha Adams is charged with kidnapping and aggravated assault. 33-year-old Deanna Segura Luna is facing the same charges. A third woman is wanted in connection to the case. Luna's brother, Edgar Segura, is also charged. We're going to take a closer look at the case for you later today. New this midday, anthrax has been confirmed in a group of cattle at a South Dakota auction market. The animals were originally from North Dakota, but cases were discovered after one of the animals died at the sale barn, a news release from the state that did not list a location of the auction market. The Yankton Fire Department has been serving the area for 150 years. The agency started in 1874. This museum near Station 2 highlights the history of the department. From old fire trucks to uniforms, there's a lot to see. When we're gone, I mean, there's 150 years worth of history here. And somebody down at, at year 200, somebody will be able to walk in here and say, wow, look how much has changed and look how they did things back then. And We'll dig deeper into the history of the department in our eye on Kell Land coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. It's dry out there. We will be feeling some strong winds before too long and a bit of a cool down, right, Scott? Well, we're looking at temperatures to cool a little for tomorrow, closer to average, which, you know, nowadays, middle to upper 60s. We'll have some areas in the 60s for tomorrow. In the meantime, we do have temperatures that are above average right now, and they've extended the red flag warning today. Notice how it covers eastern, southeastern Kelloland as we do have the breezy conditions, the warm temperatures, and the low humidity as we've had that uh, seems like for the past several weeks. We do have mostly clear skies overhead, and that is something that will continue throughout the day today. As we do take a look at the wind, it's from the south in eastern, southeastern Kelloland, still ahead of this front that will make its way across the east as we go into the later part of the afternoon and this evening. We do have a couple of these wind gusts into that 30 mile per hour range, such as Marshall at 30, Worthington at 36, and a 38 mile per hour wind gust in Sisseton. Again, those winds across eastern, southeastern Kettleland coming in from the southwest. Temperatures are in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Currently 81 in winter. It's 80 in Rapid City, 72 in Huron, 69 degrees in Brookings. We have 70 in Watertown and 65 in Aberdeen. The winds will die down later this afternoon, heading into this evening and tonight. We'll have relatively light wind speeds as we do take it. The wind gusts in the northeastern South Dakota, they may pick up a little yet this afternoon. Otherwise, later this evening and tonight, we'll go with lighter winds in central South Dakota. Still a couple of those wind gusts that may approach the mid 20 mile per hour range for the afternoon and western South Dakota. And we'll have northwest winds here gusting to that 25 to 30 mile per hour range. But by this evening, it looks like those winds will die down. As we do take a look at the forecast, highs today will reach the 80s in many locations. A chance for 90 degree heat today in south central South Dakota. Clear skies, light winds, and we are looking at temperatures in the 40s for tonight. In the meantime, this weekend we'll have temperatures that will remain well above average. 80s to start the weekend, 60s and 70s to end the weekend. Keep in mind, very strong wind on Saturday. Some of those wind gusts of 40 to near 50 miles per hour. I'll talk more about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sounds good. Thank you, Scott. Downtown Sioux Falls has announced the winner of this year's Pork Showdown. 
Crawfords beat the competition with their bourbon apple pork. More than 6,000 pork dishes were sold among the competitors. We're going to have additional coverage from the winner and also look at the economic impact of the event later today on Kelloland News. The Sioux Falls Stampede won't play their home opener until Saturday night, but it's already been an unusual start to the hockey season. The Herd have been practicing at Augustana University since mid-September because of a lack of ice at the Shields Iceplex, following issues with the facility's chiller system. Uh, it is different from the sense that you're kind of moving back and forth. You're not really in your home building at the Iceplex. We have our own locker room. We have our own facility there. It's a, it's a little bit different, but um, it certainly beats having to travel 45 minutes or an hour to, to do practice. So uh, we're certainly very thankful for what Augustana has provided for us. Team President Jim Olander says this would have been a much bigger issue last fall when Augie's venue wasn't ready and they would have been competing with the Vikings for ice time. The Stampede will play their home opener Saturday night at the Premier Center. The puck drops at 6.05. In national developments, it was a showdown of the vice presidential candidates last night. Both Minnesota Democratic Governor Tim Walz and Ohio Republican Senator J.D. Vance came into the debate with something to prove. Kelloland Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson reports with highlights from the debate. This was certainly a debate about the issues. Vance and Walls both tried to avoid making any personal attacks towards each other. But the biggest challenge of the night was having to defend past comments. For Ohio Republican Senator J.D. Vance and Minnesota Democratic Governor Tim Walls, the night started with a handshake and then they put the gloves on. The first question was about fighting in the Middle East. So Iran is closer to a nuclear weapon than they were before because of Donald Trump's fickle leadership. Donald Trump actually delivered stability in the world, and he did it by establishing effective deterrence. Then turn to immigration. What would Donald Trump talk about if we actually did some of these things? And they need to be done by the legislature. We have a historic immigration crisis because Kamala Harris started and said that she wanted to undo all of Donald Trump's border policies. On the economy, Vance leaned on Trump's four years in office. People say that Donald Trump's economic plan doesn't make sense. I say, look at the record. Kamala Harris has said to do the things she wants to do. We'll just ask the wealthiest to pay their fair share. And they sparred on abortion access. We're pro-freedom to make your own choice. We know what the implications are to not be that. Let the individual states make their abortion policy. And the debate comes as early voting has already started across the country. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson, back to you. Still to come on our show, a warning on donation scams following Hurricane Helene. And new research.